Okay, welcome to History 101. Um, what we're going to be doing in this first video is I'm going to introduce the class, tell you a little bit about who I am, um, talk to you a little bit about syllabus and um, Blackboard, syllabus and Blackboard. Um, we're going to be going over ideas, which is an acronym I came up with to help students answer, know how to answer questions. So that's important to take some notes on that. And then there are three games that we're going to be playing to help you know how to do history, creating a thesis, NASRAMA, and evidence. All right, so first thing we're going to be doing is answering these questions, um, please. So this will be question one, introducing yourself. So tell me your name, academic goals, any historic interest for this time period. Um, has anything helped you during COVID crisis? Um, any academic challenges I should know about? Of course, that will remain confidential. And if there's one thing you'd like for me to know about you, just as um, such as interests. Okay, so just a bit more about um, a bit about who I am. Um, so I was um, born locally in Manhattan Beach in the 60s when I was very middle class. Um, I went to school and um, high school in Manhattan Beach, and then I went to UCLA my first year and transferred to UCSB. It was my major, and then I did I worked um, just as a like secretary and whatever office work. Um, I went back for a master's in medieval history and American history, and I have a credential in adult ed from um, Dominguez. Um, this is just a little bit more about my background. I've been teaching at El Camino for 20 years and Dominguez for about eight years um, and a little bit longer, just college level altogether. I teach um, American history and then over at El Camino, I also teach ancient and modern. Um, my kids are 18 and 20. Um, so my daughter is 18, she'll be going to Cal State Long Beach and my son's 20 and he'll be going to UCLA for chemical engineering. So um, that's what's going on with us. Um, my interests are women's history, ethnic history, popular culture. So I'm what's called a social cultural historian. So I don't really do, I definitely do um, war and politics, but I also do these other things. Okay, so um, you're going to see a syllabus that's going to have more details than this. I'm going to use this video for several different um, versions of this class. So I don't want to be too precise, but I definitely need you to look at the syllabus, please. Um, remember when you take a college class, a lot of your seniors, so you know this, it's like a contract. You um, are agreeing to the terms. So make sure you read through, you know what the terms are, all right? Um, so um, let's see, you can see my email. Um, I will always um, respond to you pretty quickly. Um, Please always, as you know, um, don't write me from your personal email just through uh, Dominguez to kind of save us both a little bit of issue. Um, class meetings and meeting location, um, a lot of this is going to vary, but um, basically I'm going to be holding uh, meetings online via Zoom, but there's also the asynchronous um, choice, and that's going to be up to you. And, and we'll go over that more one-on-one -on -one if you need to, but I am around um, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, any other time that we're not meeting on Zoom. Okay, so um, if you could write this down, um, this will give you an idea of, of what we do in history class. A lot of people say, oh, we memorize dates or, or find out facts. And that's actually the lowest level of critical thinking. So what we do is gather and synthesize information. And <clears throat> we're going to use this information in just a little bit. But synthesize means if you've got you know five people talking and you all have different answers, we come together and we synthesize. We put that together. Analyze evidence. We're going to talk about using evidence, um, building an argument. That's most Mostly what we do here. We construct comparative analysis and evaluate perspective and prejudice. Now, obviously, you can stop the video at any time, right? Okay, so what I need you to do is write down ideas. And again, this will be the way that you answer every question throughout our term. So um, the first thing is identify what you're being asked. So make sure you absolutely know what the question is. So why and how did the stories of the Spanish conquistadors affect the Virginia colonists dealing with the Native Americans? Okay, I don't expect that you know this now, and you know, maybe a, a few classes you'll know this, but first I want just to use this question um, for this um, acronym ideas. What are the question words? Okay, so they're why and how, right? When somebody says, why do you go to Dominguez? The first word out of your mouth is because, right? And then how is going going to be your details, your such as. So if you could write those two down, why, answer is because, how is such as. I know this seems like common sense, but there's a reason why we're doing this. Okay, the next thing with the D is define your terms. So take a look at this, and what is a term that should be defined? Well, conquistadors. So if you answer something, and let's say I ask you what is um, the importance of manifest destiny, and the answer would be, Manifest destiny is really important. It's important for our American history. If it wasn't for manifest destiny, we wouldn't be American. Well, what is manifest destiny? I don't know that you know that. So you have to define your terms so that I know that you know. 
The next one is evidence or examples. And um, a really important term is primary source. So some people that uh, maybe are skipping this, when we get to the analytical paper at the end, they don't know what a primary source is, and there's a big problem with 15% of their grade. So primary source is materials that come from the original period. So for example, with um, this question, maybe we'll look at the diary of a Spanish conquistador. We'll look at um, the diary of a Virginia colonist. Um, we'll see some pictures or some stories by the Native Americans. Those are all evidence. Okay, but you can't just give me the evidence. You have to tell me how it answers your question. So how does this story about um, the natives and how they didn't like the whites, and they thought the whites were made up by like as a trick. Well, okay, you can say that, but then you have to say, how does that answer the question? And then significance is how does this tie in with the big theme? So um, what we're going to be doing is first we deal with the Native Americans, then the Virginians, which is the southern colonies, and then um, next is the New Englanders, the northern colonies. So the theme with the Virginia colonies, we'll think of what do we think of when we think of the South, right? Slavery. So these were basically pretty lazy, selfish, greedy people, okay? <laughs> Sorry to, you know generalized, but you know, anyways, there there's reasons why they came over here and they're the reasons why they came up with this, you know, whole American slavery um, horror. So um, it's, yeah, it's because they're lazy, selfish, greedy. So um, think of the big themes as related to slavery for the South. And then with the North, it would be religion, right? With the Puritans and pilgrims. So those are the big themes. Okay, now here would be a, a sample answer. So why and how did the stories of the Spanish conquistadors affect the Virginia colonists dealing with the Native Americans? Okay, so the Virginians, when they came over here, they knew the stories of the Spanish conquistadors. Think about who that would be, like Cortez and Pissarro, right? They knew that the Spanish conquistadors were treated like gods. And since they're lazy, selfish, greedy, they thought, that sounds fantastic. I want to be treated as a god, right? And the Native Americans, like Poetan, who was Pocahontas' dad, and Opakonkano, Pocahontas' his uncle, were like, no, I don't think so, right? But anyway, so let's look at how this um, answer is broken down. What? So I'm repeating back the question. This is important for an activity we're going to do in just a minute. The Spanish conquistador stories affected the Virginia colonists. Then a why? Because they fed into the Virginia dream of wealth without work. So what I need here is um, when we get to some kind of more fun questions is a general statement. And then the how is going to be your example. So the people that will get full credit are paying attention to this. So what? Repeat back the question. Why? Give me a general statement. How? Give me some examples. All right, so just so you know why I do what I do, um, if I just gave you something to read, you, about two weeks later, you'd remember about 20%. If I just talked to you without any pictures, you'd remember about 20%. If I showed you some pictures, you remember 30. If I lecture with pictures, hopefully 50. Um, if you say something, like in your discussion, you probably remember 70. And then if you're actually doing something, which, you know, in normal class, we could do that, right? We could do skits or whatever, you remember 90%. Okay, so here's some more kind of fun fun questions. So question two, this is your, your next thing on your assignment. Um, so creating a thesis, okay? So a thesis statement should include the answers to the what, why, and how questions. For example, what is your favorite vacation spot? Okay, so here's, um, this is just an example. You don't have to do this one. There'll be some in just a minute. But my favorite vacation spot is New York City, let's just say. And why, again, I have a general statement because it has many attractions suitable for my family. And then how, such as great restaurants, entertainment, and a lot of history. So those are my examples, okay? I'm not, you know, I'm interested in your opinion on this stuff, but I really want the format. That's what I'm looking for to see, do you do the format? Okay, so what I want you to do is choose two of the following questions using what, why, and how, right? Restate the question, give me a general statement, and then give me some examples, okay? That's the um, second question, um, first activity. Okay, the second activity or the third question, um, take a look at this, Nasarema, and um, it's something that I've been handing out for a long time. But um, go ahead, and then what you're going to do down below after you're done reading this is give two examples of our present day culture, which would surprise you. Um, please try to be more specific. And also, I would really appreciate more of a positive spin. It's so easy nowadays just to say something negative about our country. And I just, I read too many of these, and I really would prefer that you stay positive, please. And you'll see that's a little bit of my theme here. Okay. Um, the last game that you're going to play is called Evidence. So, first, what I want you to do is pick three of these items, and I'm going to trust you that you pick three because that's important that um, you don't know what the, uh, what the, store, what the uh, activity is until you pick your three. Okay, you pick your three. 
I trust you. Okay. So after you pick your three items, create a crime scene in which your three items may be the victim, the perpetrator, the weapon, or just evidence found on the scene. Please don't hurt any children in your story. Please describe your scenario. Okay, so what we just did, this is the first video, went pretty fast, right, is I talked about, you know, who am I, why did they let me teach this class, we talked about the syllabus and Blackboard, you can please go on syllabus, um, I mean, go on Blackboard to look at the syllabus and the specifics, okay, it's a little complicated um, how this is set up, but um, it's an error, it could be very easy, just depending, but you got it, that's your job, right, to look, to make sure you've got it. And then we talked about ideas, and then we did three games, creating a thesis, not and and evidence. Okay, so believe it or not, you actually accomplished um, these uh, goals by playing those games. So um, usually we'd have, you know, tables of people and groups of people, and they'd have to come up with different answers and synthesize. That's synthesize, come up with one answer. You definitely used evidence, right? Remember in the crime scene, you built an argument. You constructed a comparative analysis. Remember in the, the what, why, how questions. And you evaluated perspective and prejudice when we came to Nasarema. Okay, so that is it, and thank you very much.